So I've answered this question before, but there's a few new people watching my channel, and I never made like a true standalone video on it by itself. And that question is why I developed my own operating system and other creative software. I mean, first of all, I'm not trying to make like an actual competitive uh, operating system that's like, you know, meant for like functional daily use in modern society. Because actually making something like that would be like a lifelong endeavor. And it's, <laughs> it'd be mainly just like adding a bunch of like fucking drivers and other shit, like other people's, it will be having to conform to other people's uh, stuff that they have set up so you can make it usable for the average person, right? Operating systems are a very unique domain of software and software development in the sense that you can pretty much start and stop anywhere you want to and other people can build onto it or they could fork it and make something of their own or they could uh, replace it with something else, right? Replace the foundation of it with like something else, right? I mean, you could pretty much go as deep or as shallow as you want to and explore whatever niche you want to whatever extent you want. Because, I mean, you get to design everything from what the hardware does and how it's used to how memory is organized all the way to like more high level stuff like what specific apps or programs you want in your operating system or what do your windows look like? What do your uh, graphical elements look like, right? You get to design an aesthetic or a theme depending on how, you know, into graphic design you are. I mean, it has very few restrictions compared to making a website or a embedded device or a desktop program. It's the ideal software domain for creative software or making like software as like an art project, right? Because that's like fundamentally what Osaka OS is, it's a art project. I mean, when I first started making those videos, it, it wasn't, it was like, it was meant to be like sort of a joke, like how I'm gonna do this for like two or three videos as like a funny little thing, cause I was following like a tutorial for like educational purposes. Cause I, I just, I was just curious on how, like how to make one. But um, I, sort, I got I got like into it, the development was kind of fun and I could take it in like whatever direction I wanted to take it in. So uh, I just kept like developing it and I wanted to make like the videos better and I wanted to incorporate my own music. So it became like a evolving sort of creative endeavor that I still do to this day. I mean, obviously it's not a, it's not, I don't design it like it's a joke anymore, but um, I designed it to be like interesting and fun for like people to see, get developed and use and like explore, right? That's the main goal behind it. I'm not trying to make it like a super serious, compatible with everything else sort of deal. Right. And, uh, you know, for any new people watching, I know it can be very, it can be kind of off-putting, the fact that it's themed after, like, an anime character, right? I mean, you don't have to be, like, an anime person to watch it, you don't have to be, like, any of these, you just have to be into, like, computers and shit to, you know, really enjoy it. Or you could just, like, the pretty lights and fucking music or whatever, right? I, I was actually considering, uh, rebranding it into some, like, rebranding it after the city or some shit as, like, uh, because, you know, it's like... <laughs> The more I, the more I make these videos, and the more effort I put into them, the more fucking deranged I look to like outsiders, right? Which, I mean, I guess it's just what it is. I, I decided not to rebrand it because it'll look like fucking fake, or like I look like kind of like a like a like a sellout or some I don't know, like something like that. I didn't, I didn't feel like uh, it didn't feel very good with me, so I just decided to stick with it. I mean, it's you know, it's very absurd. I think it fits in with like the overall theme of it, anyways. But you know, software to me has always been the most enjoyable when it's been like a creative endeavor, right? And you know, it's kind of weird because not a lot of people think of the actual like software development itself or like programs as like uh, sort of pieces of art, or at least like, like not traditionally, right? But like all of our, every like creative medium is now done digitally, it's now done on computers, it's now rendered by software. You know, there, there's these things called uh, demos back in the day like software demos, I don't, they might still be a thing now, but definitely not like as big. But in the 90s and 2000s, people would make these programs that would use certain, you know, techniques in software development or uh, utilizing the hardware to create these graphical audio showcases that were like really crazy and advanced and sick to look at at the time. I might show like some footage of it right now. But at the time, it's like very, you know, insane, right? But I mean, now, like, you can just render that stuff in 30 seconds in like a video editor or make some crazy stuff in like some fucking, uh, you know, audio program, right? 
but it's like one of the rare instances of software or like software programs themselves being viewed as like an artistic expression or like some art piece that's not really seen at least to my knowledge not really seen in any other uh, domain right and uh, you know that's mainly just what this uh, channel is about just me making stuff that i think is cool using computers because computers are very uh computers are very interesting right their, their software itself is very interesting I mean, software engineers are typically seen as, like, real engineers by some people, right? At least from what I see online. And, um, I mean, there's, like, obvious constraints and physical limitations of a computer that you need to take into account when making software, or things like network latency, or, um, you know, user error, or traffic, whatever, right? But software itself, a lot of the times, at least, software is designed from this sort of standpoint of like describing some manipulation of data using certain fundamental operations sort of like math right and a lot of the times when you're writing this stuff you know unless you're dealing with like some certain problem that has to deal with like real real world shit a lot of the times you find yourself thinking in ways of like you're you're working in or making something in a perfect world or like there are perfect conditions for you to describe something in its most purest form of just pure logical instructions on how to do something. And when you're making something as complex and interconnected with itself as an operating system or a kernel, right? It's like this, it's like you're making a, it's like you're designing an entire world designed or, or based on certain fundamental truths about like existence itself, at least relative to the program you're writing, right? The program you're writing only knows like so much, right? I mean, obviously making an operating system, you have to deal with like uh, certain configurations that the hardware needs to do, certain specific tasks that you need to do, right? But once you get over that initial hurdle, once that's behind you, and you get to uh, the actual development of, you know, your operating system and what what you want, what direction you want to push it in, it's like the most purest form of. I guess, creative expression you can have in software, in my opinion. That's at least the appeal to me. I mean, you know, I, I have a scripting language that calls pre-compiled uh, kernel code, it is, you know, the kernel, to do, like, very basic tasks or very advanced tasks on the operating system. I also have in-depth, like, the user can access the hardware drivers and read and write data to the disk, the network card, they could choose to execute a script as a multitasking program or, you know, execute it as a part of the kernel itself, right? I mean, it's very, I mean, it's just like little things like that that you can go very in-depth to and make, uh, like your own in a sense, your own ecosystem. It's, uh, something that you don't really see in other creative, I guess, works, at least. Uh, not creative works, but like creative, like, avenues. Like, when you're making music, for example, which is something I've been doing a lot longer than I've been writing uh, software. When you're making music, you have to adhere to certain mixing standards, you have to adhere to certain tones and keys and all that shit, right? I mean, you could get very experimental, don't get me wrong, but... There's gonna be very, very little interest among, like, people if you do get experimental, right? I mean, I, that's like, it's like jazz is, is, like, the closest to it, where it's, uh... You stick to some standards and some like basic music theory, but you can get very experimental and in depth. And you could, uh, I mean, at that point, you'll only be appealing to like certain like music nerds and shit. But it's still like a very uh, interesting correlation between the two and my interest in them, right? I mean, the role of computers and software is very vast and wonderful and filled with fucking chocolate rivers and gumdrop forests, right? I mean, it's a very beautiful thing. But that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about. I just wanted to make a video talking about fundamentally why I'm making uh, Osaka OS. And also, I want, I want to make something positive, right? Because some of my past few like commentaries have been kind of like cynical. I got a comment recently that said um, something about me being like overly cynical or overly like negative talking about the shit. Despite me like putting a bunch of like man hours into it. And um, I think I'm just like kind of a cynical person sometimes, but... I wanted to make a video talking about something that I like, you know, as a way to not make myself sound too fucking bitter, you know. But, um, I know this is like sort of a more introspective or whatever type of video, but 
I just recently hit 10,000 subscribers, so I thought I'd make something to fit that. You know, it's a nice even uh, round number, so thanks.